What's up, baby? It's 40 from Can't Stop Art. So today's tutorial is a little different. This is going to be part of a painting tutorial. However, I'm going to show you the steps that I took in order to achieve the results that you see on screen. That's an actual painting on a canvas board, 8 by 10 inches. However, in order to to visualize this, what I did is I used Photoshop to break apart a photo and set it to be a certain amount of colors. Now, this particular piece is a study in monochromatic uh, painting. Granted, you're going to look at this and say, that's not one color. You're right. The background is a totally different color because I wanted to create contrast between the main subject and the background. However, technically, we could have made that background a version of teal, and then this would be a fully monochromatic painting. So the model herself is actually just painted in teal. Now, different shades and different tints of teal. Shades are basically a color mixed with some black to get a darker version of that color and tints are a color mixed with some white to get a lighter version of that color. So this is using seven different actual uh, versions of teal. Teal itself, which is right here, and then three shades of it and three tints of it. So why don't we jump in? I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of Photoshop. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm not going to teach you Photoshop from to start to finish, only because we don't have that kind of time. I don't want this to be a two hour tutorial. And this is just the first part, the part that uses Photoshop. Tomorrow I will make the next part, which will be creating the stencil using a stencil cutter. However, if you do not have a stencil cutter, you could always cut the stencil by hand. We'll get into that later. Let's jump into the image I used by clicking on this <laughs> different tab up at the top. This is a friend of mine. She let me use her picture, and this is the picture I used for this particular painting. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and create a selection to remove the Monday face. Granted, there's part of the D right there, but that's fine. I'll come up to... Uh, image, I'll select crop, and now we've removed that, well, most of it. I'll press command plus on my keyboard to uh, zoom in, press space bar and drag up, and what we want to do is remove this part of the D. I'll press command D on my keyboard to remove my, uh, unselect my selection. I'll come over here to the clone stamp tool, and uh, the clone stamp tool takes a part of your image, and then uh, you can copy and paste from different parts of your image. You need to select a source. You do that by pressing option on your keyboard and, and left clicking. I'm doing right above this because what I want to do is take this and put that here. So I'll press option, click here, and then I'll press with my uh, mouse a couple times. Again, I'll reset or reselect my source. I'll come down here. I'll do it again. Do it again. And the reason I'm resetting the source is if we keep dragging down, sometimes that this, this ends up taking from here. So I just reset it. Pa, 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 pa. It doesn't have to be perfect. The tonality here is not a perfect match. We're not going for photorealism here because we are just going to use this image to create a look, right? So if it's not that I need to sell you on the fact that this D never existed there. That's for a different tutorial. <laughs> I'll press L on my keyboard to select my lasso tool. If I don't have the polygon lasso tool selected, which I currently do, we can press Shift L to cycle through the different lasso tools. Or you can come up here, click, hold, and select polygon lasso tool. Next, this selection, if I click, allows me to click multiple times to create my selection. However, it does not have to be perfect. So I'm not worrying about the edges, not having any... Uh, uh, I don't know, jaggedness or squareness, because the reality is, again, we are we are not going for realism here. We are just going to use this image to create a division of colors that we can then use to create this monochromatic painting. So it's up to you how close or how perfect this is. I'll sh later, you're going to see why it doesn't matter that much if you're perfect. In fact, I'm sure some parts I'm uh, leaving the background in, some parts I'm cutting it out. When I come back over here, you'll notice there's a small circle that appears next to the lasso tool. If I click again, that closes the selection. Now, if I press delete on my keyboard, this layer is locked. It's not going to remove it. So I need to double click on the layer, press enter to unlock the layer. And now if I press delete on my keyboard, I have now created transparency where that selection is. If I press command D on my keyboard, I can uh, release the selection and come over here 
and then do the same thing around this side of her. And all we're trying to do is remove the background. So, boom. Now we have our background removed. The next thing that we want to do is desaturate this image. If we go up to image up here, select adjustments, come down to desaturate or press command shift U, we can desaturate the image, turning it black and white. Next, we're going to want to select the image adjustments, brightness, contrast, because we want to have control over what colors are going to be selected when we break this down to be a certain amount of colors. In order to do that, for this particular image, now the, the values you set here depend on your image, but for this particular image, she's too bright right here in the face. We want the computer to be able to decide certain things. So we're going to drop this to, let's say, minus 40 and then plus, I don't know, the contrast may be 60-ish or something like that. And this gives us differences in the values, right? So we can see that the face has different values, excuse me, of tonality and so forth. And that's really what we're going for. You can play with this. If you don't get the result in the next step that you want, come back, restart over and change the brightness and uh, contrast values to, to get different brightness and contrast values, which will give you a different result in the next step. Now, technically what I'm doing here is I'm creating a multi-layered stencil. And you could do this for graffiti, for example, if you were going to use spray paint, you could use this technique to create a multi-layered stencil of a particular image that you could then use to spray. And in order to do that, what you do is go to image adjustments and posterize. However, we're not going to do that just yet. What posterize does is it allows you to tell you uh, tell the computer how many colors do you want the final image to be. And then it's going to make its own calculations based on the image to say, hey, this is going to be seven colors, for example, which is what I did in the test painting I did for this uh, particular tutorial. However, we're going to do one additional step. We're going to go to filter filter gallery and we're going to select cutout this is going to give us more control of what this image looks like when it breaks it apart into colors now you have a few a couple sliders you might want to mess with here the number of levels and edge simplicity the number of levels changes how many well before when i say colors it's not exactly true because when at whatever we select here, it is breaking this into less colors. However, there are gradients in these colors. So if you just use the cutout filter, you'll notice when we go to select a color, it's the selections will be weird. That's why you still have to apply posterize. For this particular image, I think on the first painting, I used the value of uh, seven and then four in edge simplicity. In this one, I think I'm going to use eight and four because I think it looks a little bit better. Now, if we drag edge simplicity down, this looks super realistic. It's going to make the stencil. I, it's not the look that I want to go for. It, but it definitely looks more realistic. If you drag this up to 10, it looks kind of Picasso-ish. I think four was a good value for a good balance because of the look that I'd like to achieve with this painting. So eight and four, I'll click on OK. Boom, we have this. Next, we need to go to Image, Adjustments, and Posterize. Whatever number we select here, right? If we select two, this is a two color stencil. If we select 13, this is a 13 color stencil. Now this can keep going up until a certain amount. You know, at some point, the values don't change. Uh, you, you notice the image isn't changing anymore because there's only so many colors that it's going to select, right? But you notice these little uh, changes that are happening here, that means there's gradations in some of these colors. We don't want that. I selected seven, and let me tell you why I selected seven. I selected seven because what we're going to do is we're going to paint this monochromatically. We are going to use one color. In my example, I use teal, and when I use teal, I use teal, the actual color, which was the fourth color in the range, and then I used three darker versions of teal and three lighter versions. The darker versions are called shades, and the way you do that in acrylic is by mixing some black paint in, and, you, uh, and the lighter versions are called tints, and the way you do that is by adding some white. So we're going to select seven here, click on OK, boom. Now we're making progress. The next thing we want to do is come over here and we want to select the, uh, we don't want to select the eyedropper, we want to select the magic wand. You can press W on your keyboard, but you want to make sure that you are not on the quick selection tool, you want the magic wand tool. Next, we're going to click on the darkest color. 
we'll right click after we select the darkest color and we'll say similar. That will select similar versions of this dark color. Now you see down here, up here, next we're gonna right click and go to layer via cut, boom. Now in the layer palette, you'll see it created a new layer. If I hide that layer, what I just, uh, what I just cut is now hidden and that's perfect. We'll come back over, click on layer zero, we'll select the next darkest color, we'll right click, we'll go to similar, then we'll right click and we'll go to layer via cut. We'll reorder it by dragging it up on the layer palette, we'll hide it, and then we'll do the very next color, which will be this. Notice when I click there that didn't select it correctly, that's because I wasn't on the right layer in the layer palette. So again, I'll click over here, right click, go to similar, then right click, go to layer via cut, and boom, reorder it by dragging it up, turn off the visibility, select layer zero, and select the next dark uh, lighter color, which would be this. I'll right click, go to similar. This is a little bit repetitive. Layer via cut, I'll drag it up to the top. Now this layer four, when I turn it on and off, this will be our main color. There will be no white or black added to it, so whatever color we decide to paint in, Let's go ahead and turn that off. I'll come back to layer zero. I'll select the next darker, uh, lighter color. Go to similar, right click, go to layer via cut, drag this up to the top, turn off the visibility, select layer zero, come to the next lighter color, which is right here, right click, similar, right click, layer via cut, and I'll drag this up to the top. Now, I'll turn off the visibility. There is only one color left, which is here. I can turn it on and off the visibility, so we don't need to do this again. We'll just click on layer zero, drag it to the top. I'll double click on the, the layer to change the layer name, and we'll call it layer seven, just so it's in numerical order because I'm OCD. <laughs> now, if I turn on all the layers, one of the things you're gonna notice is that, <coughs> excuse me, you'll notice is there's an outline over some of this. And that's because the cuts are not exactly perfect. And so there's a little separation. That will not matter for stenciling in graffiti or for what we're gonna use it for. So don't worry about it. Next, if obviously this is in different versions of uh, black and white, right? So this is different versions of gray because we desaturated the image. However, what if you want to visualize the color that you wanna use? You come over here to the layer palette, if you did it in seven colors, and you decide that layer four is gonna be our main color. I'll come down here, click on the new layer, uh, new layer icon, and now I have layer eight. I'm gonna double click on that to change it to main color. Next, I will right click on this layer and select create clipping mask. Now, whatever color we fill in this layer will be applied to layer four, which is right here. Right, so let's select what color is that? Should that be right? I don't know. How about a mm, a beautiful blue, right? So maybe something like this. No, we want maybe. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe something like this. I don't know. So I will, right here, I'm looking at the luminance value because I want something that is at least a 40. And the reason for that, obviously, these numbers don't matter because you're using acrylic paint. But for visualization purposes, it kind of matters. And it's too difficult to explain right now. So I'm just going to select OK. We're going to use this blue as our main color. I'll make sure main color is selected. It is now my foreground swatch here. I'll press Option, Delete on my keyboard. And boom, it fills this layer with that color. It's only showing on this part of the image here because we created a clipping mask and we can turn this on and off by selecting layer four. Now that shows us what our main color looks like. If we come over here, click and drag to the new layer palette, a uh, new layer icon, it creates a copy of that. We can drag this up to layer five, but now there's no clipping mask associated. So we need to right click, create clipping mask. And now this is being clipped to layer five. However, it's the same exact color. We don't want that. The layer five, six, and seven are supposed to be lighter. So we're gonna come over here to the color swatch, we'll click on it, and to make this lighter, I think if we go to, no, we need to go to 53, right? So it was at 43, and we changed the luminance to 53. If we select OK, and we make sure this is selected, press Option Delete on our keyboard, now we have a little bit white added or a little bit of luminance added. If it was for acrylic paint, it will be adding a little bit of white. In the computer, it's just adding some luminance. 
Next, we will repeat this process by clicking and dragging this to the new layer icon, then dragging this above layer 6, right clicking, going to create clipping mask, and now we want to change this color. Come over to the color picker, change the luminance value from 53 to 63. Select OK. Now we'll press Option Delete on our keyboard because this uh, is selected, and boom, now we have the next lighter color. We're going to do the same thing to drag above layer 7. Boom. Right click, create clipping mask, and now we want to change this color. Come over to the color swatch, changes from 63 to 73. Press Option Delete on our keyboard, and boom, you saw it just created this lighter color here. We want to do this for the darker uh, ones as well. We'll come back over here to the main color. We will select it. Pressing I on our keyboard selects the eyedropper tool, and now if we click on this, which is currently the darkest shade or our main color, then we have that selected here. That's important because if we bring it, the luminance value down, you want to do it from this main color, not from the lighter color that was previously selected in the color picker. So we'll click on this over here. We'll drag it to the new layer icon. We'll drag this down above layer three. We'll right click, say create clipping mask. And now we want to change this color. We'll come over to the color picker. Instead of 43, we'll put it at 33. Then we'll press Option Delete on our keyboard and fill it with that color. Again, we'll click on this, drag it to the new layer icon, we'll drag this above layer 2, we'll right click, say Create Clipping Mask, and now we want to change this color. Again, Color Picker changes from 33 to 23. Press Enter. Then press, because this is selected, Option Delete on our keyboard fills it with that foreground color in our swatches. We'll scroll down a little bit, we'll click, we'll drag to the new layer icon, we'll then drag this over layer one, the final layer. We're going to right click, go to create clipping mask. And then with this selected, we'll come over to the color picker. We'll change this from 23 to 10. Let's say press option delete on our keyboard to fill this layer with that color. And now we have seven different versions of that main blue color, which is right here in her cheek, right? Again, you'll see some separations here. It's okay. It won't look like that in the final product. But now we have this broken apart. So what we can do, or what we probably should have done in the beginning, is make sure we're working in the right size, right? <laughs> I told you that I'm working in 8 by 10 inch uh, uh, canvas board. So we want to make sure that this is 8 by 10 inches, which 8 by 10 inches will print on letter and it will print on A4 paper. So you can print this on cardstock on your printer and cut it out with an X-Acto blade yourself, which is probably what you'll do unless you have a craft machine which will that cuts out stencils. So let's go up to image. We'll go to canvas size. And right now, if we change this uh, to inches, we'll see that this is 7.5 by a height of 11. Well, we want the height to be 10 inches, right? So I'll go ahead and press OK, and it says the new canvas size, we don't want that. I'm sorry. Okay, come on, brain, work. We'll go to image, <laughs> we'll go to image size. My bad. We'll select inches. It's good. Uh, I make mistakes once in a while. We're also, we're going to change the resolution from 72, which is screen resolution, to 150. Oops, I pressed enter prematurely. I'll press command zero on my keyboard to make, fill this uh, screen with that. I'll go back to image, image size. And I'm going to change this from 7.5 by 11. I want this to be max height of 10. Remember, because we're working on an 8 by 10 canvas. So when I change this to 10, it automatically changed the width in relation because this is uh, the link is turned on. So the width is 6.5. And six and I'll go ahead and click on OK. Now, if we want this to be 8 by 10 inches exactly, then we can come up to image. We can select the canvas size. We switch this to images, uh, to inches, sorry. And right now it's 10 inches tall, which we want the canvas to be that, but we want the width to be eight. Now we want it to, to go protrude left here. So if I click right here, this says it's gonna push that extra space off to the left. I'll say, okay. Now, the reason that we did this is I can put registration marks in here. So if I scroll up, click on this little uh, new layer icon, it put it down here. I can drag this up to the top. Come on, baby. Boom. Now this is on the top, right? If I come over here or I press D on my keyboard, I can put the default swatches, which is black and white. Black is the foreground. White is the background. I'll press M on my keyboard to select the marquee tool, and I'll create a tiny little box right here. I'll then 
press Option Delete on my keyboard, and now I have this little tiny box filled with black here. I'll press Command D on my keyboard to remove, uh, release the selection, and while this layer eight, which is just that little box right there, is selected, I'll press Command J to duplicate that layer. Now, changing to the Move tool by pressing V or clicking here, I can press Shift on my keyboard and drag this over, and notice it's not snapping there. So I'll let go, I'll come up to View, and I'll turn on Snap. Now, if I drag this over, it should snap to the corner. So now I have two registration marks here, right? Next, I will press Command J on my keyboard with this layer selected, and it will create another copy. I can then bring this down here to the corner, and it will snap into the corner. With this layer selected, I press Command E, it's gonna merge with the layer below. I'll press Command E again, and now this is those three registration marks. I can change the name of this layer to registration marks. And now when I print this, uh, I can cut these out for alignment. Because remember, each layer is going to be uh, cut out or whatever. And I'm using a machine where it's going to cut them out perfectly. However, depending on how I put the paper in, it's uh, difficult to align it perfectly. So having these uh, registration marks in here is really good if you're using a stencil cutting machine. If you're doing it by hand, it's still good because this will help you line it up on the canvas board. Because remember, you're not printing on uh, eight by 10 inches. You're printing on letter or you're printing on A4. And if that's the case, you need these uh, registration marks so you can line it up with the canvas underneath it. So, how do we go about doing this? Now that we've set this all apart, I'm just going to give you a quick preview, and then in tomorrow's uh, tutorial, I will show you how you take what we just did here and make it into uh, seven different stencils. But just so you know, if we come over here, and you notice in these colors, this area that extended is transparent because we extended the canvas. Anyway, I'm going to come here. I scroll down to the bottom where it says main color copy six. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this onto the new layer icon. Notice that it is still a clipping mask to the layer below. Also, I forgot to do something. Let's undo that. We'll go to edit, undo duplicate layer, and now we have this, right? What I want to do is scroll up. I want to turn off the registration marks. Now I want to press command A on my keyboard to select everything. I'm going to go to edit copy merged, right? Now I'm going to press create, a, well, I'll select the top layer. I'll click on create a new layer. Now I have layer eight. I'm going to go ahead and press command V on my keyboard. And now that just copied everything and put it in one layer. Notice that it offset it. So I'm going to, with the move tool selected, I'm going to move this over to line up with my image. And it, sh it should attach if you have snap on. Go to view, snap, make sure it's on. It should line up. Now that it's lined up, what I'm going to do is press command and I'm going to click on this layer. And when I do that, it should select uh, what's in that layer, which is the whole image. I'm going to make sure I have the darkest color selected. If I scroll down here, uh, well, I don't even have to do that. I just press I on my keyboard, select the darkest color and press option delete. Now I have just filled her with the darkest color. If we click and drag this layer to the bottom, which is what we want to do, and put it over main color copy six, because now we can get rid of this. And the whole reason for that is when we paint the darkest color, we want to paint this whole amount in the darkest color, and we want to put colors on top of it, right? So I'm going to delete these bottom two layers by pressing the delete icon with both of them selected, select yes, and now I have this. I can create a new layer above it, scroll down a little bit, right click and say create clipping mask. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can change it to black for printing purposes. I'll come over here, click on this layer icon uh, or the D for default foreground and background colors. Now black is selected. I can press option delete on my keyboard. And now if I hide everything else, you'll notice that now this is 100%, uh, well, there's some marks in here, but we have now made it black so that if we print this out, we know that we can cut here, 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 here. We still want to make sure that the registration marks are on, right? Because we're going to cut the registration marks all out also so we can line it up. So, guys, I think I'm going to leave the tutorial 
where we're at right here. But basically what you'll do is all of these colors we use to visualize what it will look like by picking one color and making different shades and tints, we will change them to black. You know, for example, I will turn this off. I'll come over here to main color copy five with black selected as my foreground color. I'll press option delete on my keyboard. It can't fill because it's hidden. Let's turn it on. I'll go ahead and press option delete. Boom. Now this is black for printing, right? That's all. We'll talk about cleaning up, uh, cleaning up our stencils in the next tutorial, along with creating these stencils. So I hope you guys found this informative. Guys, if you like the video, please like, please comment, please share with your friends and look forward to tomorrow's tutorial where we take all of these different layers, turn them into stencils, clean up the stencils, talk about things that you want to look for, etc. Until next time, I'm out.